Ambassador is gracious, but you have to know that at 12 o'clock in Romania, everybody's looking at their watches, so <laughs> I know the feeling. Usually when I finish earlier, I tell them that next Sunday I'm going to go a little bit over so I can make up time. Uh, I may be able to skip about four uh, Sundays in order to make up time for the last year, but that's a different story to tell. So uh, I'm here today because my grand-grandfather, uh, somebody gave him a testament in Hungarian language. He was a priest helper, and uh, the priest in the village there where he was wanted to send him to, to become a priest. So he took the New Testament and started reading the New Testament at the wooden stove light that they had there. And he started asking the priest questions. At some point, the priest told his father, you know, take the New Testament away from him because he was going to get lost. That's how he started the ministry where my grandfather and my, my father are coming from. He just went in people's houses and read from the New Testament. They didn't know how to preach. No three points, uh, homiletics, uh, for them, it was just reading the word. And then my father, he got uh, baptized in the river in a Saturday night because under the communist regime, you had to be approved to be baptized by the uh, minister of cults there. So the people who were not approved, uh, the pastor would baptize them Saturday night in a river close by. And uh, I'm here today because brother Don Kyer, the founder of Rona Fellowship, many of you maybe know him, he took time one evening in our living room many, many years ago, I was 12 years old, to speak with a little boy about God. As we were in our living room, he has been in our house for many, many times. He stopped and asked me, do you know God? And I said, Don, I'm the preacher's son. I go to church, I sing in church, I do all kinds of things in church. He said, I, I didn't ask you if you're the preacher's son, I asked you if you know God. He went with me on that evening on Roman roads, and uh, that's the evening that I became, became saved. In Romania, 12 year, at, at 12 years old, they won't baptize you because you are too young. So they baptized me at 15. Things have been changed from the time that I've been baptized, but that's how things were back then. If you wanna uh, do a next, none of our clickers work, so I will have to say next. Uh, this is the team verse for Frontline, and what we are trying to do at Frontline is find uh, this faithful men who, sh who are able to teach others. And I can tell you today that it is a struggle to find faithful men. It's a struggle for us to recruit students at the school. Uh, every year, it, it is a struggle to find good people who want to learn, uh, uh, to learn about the Lord and be able to teach others about the Lord. If I need to speak about Romania a little bit, if you want to do an X for me. It's bordering the Black Sea on the east, Bulgaria, Ukraine, Moldova, Hungary, and Serbia. Population of Romania, 19.94 million. 18.64 Eastern Orthodox Church. And 0 0.56 Baptist. All Protestants, all together in Romania, it's five. It's 5.95, all Protestants in Romania. If I need to tell you a little bit about uh, the people of Romania, if you want to do an X for me. Very religious people. How many of you had been in Romania last year? A few of you. You've seen their churches. That's how they call it, their churches. Very religious people. They are going to the church pretty much every Sundays. As we are going to the Baptist church, they are going to the Orthodox church. We meet each other on, uh, on the way to the churches. We greet each other, but everybody is, it, it is with his religion. Very friendly people, and I hope uh, some of you who visited Romania find that out. Uh, relational people. You cannot talk with them about God if they don't know you, if they don't have a relationship uh, with you. They're, if you want to change your religion in Romania, you are, look, you are looked up with disgrace. It's almost a natural, uh, 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 it's almost a, 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 a national sin to change your religion. They have a saying in Romania that you don't change your wife and your religion. That's how hard they are in this uh, uh, Greek Orthodox uh, uh, 
religion. If you are born a Romanian, if, and, and if you are not declaring no other religion, you are a Greek Orthodox. That's how it is. Can you do next for me? Maybe some of you uh, have seen that when you've been into Romania, but the majority of them are worshipping holy relics. They are staying in line for three miles to kiss the relics. They wait in line for 12 hours. And they pray for health and protection. And I have a picture for you this morning just to see what that means. And if you want to do an X for me. You see there young people, children, old people who are kissing the same casket all over again. And they are praying to those bones, holy bones, that's how they call it. That will going to give them health and protection. But the biggest problem in Romania is that if you invite them to church, they will tell you that they are Christians. My, preference, uh, my, my personal preference would be for them to not know nothing about the Lord. It is such a confusion. It, it's such a paganist practice with Christian practices altogether. Even today, the priests are not encouraging their people to read the Bible. They are the anointed one who can read and understand the Bible and preach the Bible to them. Their priests told them that our Bible is different from their Bible. So sometimes I, I tell them, bring your Bible and we're going to read in your Bible. Because John 3.16 is the same in my Bible and, and, and in their Bible. If you do an X for me. So how are you inviting somebody to, to church who are telling you that they are Christians? And uh, in the Orthodox religion, the church is the one who is giving salvation. So if you are in a good stand, uh, standards with the church, then you are okay. When you die, the priest is doing a ceremony service where he's sending you in a in the good place. In a green place, how they call it there. If you want to do a next. So what Frontline Fellowship did? We have experienced before 1994, but in 1994, Frontline Fellowship saw the need of uh, uh, men to be trained there. And we try in 1991, Frontline, and with a group of people to bring in the states, 20 people to get trained, with the hope that they're going to go back in Romania. Do you know how many of them went back? Two. The 94, Frontline decided it is a lot more easier and cheaper to start a school there. So the Romanians can come there at the school. What Frontline Fellowship did is they wanted a Romanian school for Romanians with Romanian teachers. And I can tell today, and I have pictures to show you that the majority of our teachers are Romanians. We have American pastors coming and teach the module, but the day-to-day -day classes are held by the Romanian pastors, actually, because the whole idea uh, at uh, uh, TBBI, it was that we want a Bible school. We didn't want it a university. We just want pastors to teach these uh, people how to serve in their churches. Because you can get theology anywhere, but you cannot get hands-on training. It's hard to find somebody who's going to train you to be uh, a worker uh, and, and a leader. Go back one, please. Thank you. Usually when we're thinking of missionaries, we're thinking of one family that we put all our resources and we send them on the field, right? I just want to tell you that for an American missionaries, it takes about two years in order to be able to speak the language. Uh, to preach in Romanian language, that's a different uh, thing altogether. Frontline decided to work with nationals. And if you do a next for me, who know the language, who know the culture, just to give you an example, we have been born in Romania, stayed in the States. I stayed in the States for 10 years, my wife for 12. The kids are born here. It took us, who were born there, three years to, uh, to readapt to the cultural environment there, just for you to figure out how big the, the changes are. So Frontline Frontline decided to find uh, Romanian people, Romanian young men and young uh, women who want to, to get trained. They know the language, they know the culture. With uh, uh, an American missionary family, we can probably sustain there about seven or eight national families there. Uh, you will uh, ask me probably in this morning that, that meaning that you don't need American missionary, we do need. We encourage American missionaries to come and work with our nationals. Actually, we are having a couple and, and a single lady, Brittany, maybe you know Brittany, 
who are thinking to move back to Romania in January, but they're going to work with our national uh, pastors and with our national uh, people there. If you want to do a next, you have a pictures here with uh, Mike Allen in the back, uh, Bill Forner, and our Romanian teachers. The majority of, uh, of them are with us for about 17 or 18 years. So we don't have the tendency of changing teacher every year. We don't like that. <laughs> if you do a next for me. Many of you probably, uh, Pastor Benson, remember the old classroom there? Well, I have good news for you this morning. I have pictures with the new classroom there. And this, that's one picture, and I have another picture. This is another picture with a new classroom there. Uh, this year, we had 24 students that came for the evening and the day school uh, classes there. It was a blessing for us to be able to finish the, the new facility, the new part of the building. I would like to tell you today that we are done building, but we are not done building, unfortunately. But I believe that we are doing good steps toward the finishing the, uh, of the project. And uh, if uh, we need a prayer, we need a prayer that God will gonna guide us there and uh, give us the resources and, uh, and give us the wisdom. Because with this building pro uh, process, we run in so many unknown issue that is not even funny anymore. Next. Graduation 2014. And you've seen there two ladies. One is working in our, uh, both of them are working in our churches with, with kids ministry. We do encourage the ladies uh, uh, who are working in kids ministry to come to school. And we like that. Can you do a next for me? Graduation 2015. This was in Boksha. And if you do a next, you'll see graduation of 2016. This is the graduation from this year. And uh, all our teacher or teachers said that um, this is uh, the best graduation that we had. Well, I hope the next year will be the best graduation that we have. And I hope the next year after the next year will be the best graduation that we have. So we are looking forward to go forward. Right now we have uh, uh, two programs. It's a day program that can be held on the evening classes as well. Instead of one year, we're going to do two years in the evening classes. And the second program is a four-year degree. Does it have to <coughs> finish the first year and then graduate 16 modules in a period of three years? Some of them are only finishing the first year. Some of them are finishing the, 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 full, the full extent of the, of the training there. It is a blessing to see some of them after several years, after they finish the first year, they come back to take the modules. So it's always a, a process where they are growing and growing, and we are so blessed to, to see that there. Could you do a next for me? I put there a picture with some pastors that are from our local uh, uh, area there that finish with our uh, school. They're our graduates. The reason that I put a picture there is that uh, one of the guys there died in uh, April of this, uh, this year, 58 years old. They found him with cancer in three months. We buried him. It was a dear colleague, um, a godly man. I was so encouraged at his funeral. I went there, shake his wife's hand, and she said, you know, this is what God wants. It is his plan. It, I mean, all, our, all of our colleagues there, pastor that went there, all of us were encouraged by his wife. We, we went there to encourage her, and we got encouraged. A godly man, and, 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 and we pray for his house, that God will continue to bless his house. The next picture pictures is a 10-year is a graduation that we had there at school. We invite them to come back after 10 years to tell us about their ministry, to see their kids, to see their wife, to see how they are doing. And we were amazed to have... Uh, Graduates from Moldova coming back, graduates from Ukraine coming back. Some of them are serving the Lord in sports ministry. Some of them are serving the Lord in outreach ministry. Not all of them are pastors, not all of them are pastors, but everybody's doing something for the Lord. And we were so excited to be there and have this meeting with them. And some of them are very well-known pastors in our local uh, area there. So thanks, thanks the Lord for that. Can you do next for me? Well, this is how the new construction that is ready now looked like in 2010 when we moved back. It was five feet of water in the middle there, collapsing fence on the left there, and uh, we have been threatened. We have been threatened with a lawsuit. 
from our neighbors because right there after his fence he had a swimming pool that it was almost coming in our pool. And I have, I have pictures with a new building now. And if you do a next, and this is how the, the same place is looking today. It's God's grace and your support. And I'm here today to thank you for your support, financial support, pray uh, for your prayers, for everything that you did for us, for allowing Pastor Benson and, and your team to come to Romania to see the ministry. It, it, it's such a unique thing to be able to connect here in the States. People are asking me why we should invest in your ministry. I say because we are inviting you there to see our ministry. We want you to have a, uh, a grasp of our ministry. We, we want to connect your church with our ministry there. Because by all means we are a team. None of us can do ministry uh, by his own. So uh, we are praising the Lord for what he did there. I can tell that sometimes many of our board members had questions if we're going to ever finish the new building. But by God's grace and your support, that's how the building is looking today. If you do an X for me. This is the old building. We start remodeling the old building. Unfortunately, we discovered there more problems than we expect to have. It was a basement there from World War II. From the, it was a bombarded area there in World War II. So people just built on top of that thing. Nobody knew. Uh, and some other issue that we have there. So just a little bit more. Be with us and help us and pray for us and support us. We are looking forward to finish this. So we have the project. Uh, at least the project of building complete. You do a next for me. This is one of our graduates from about four hours away from us, Adi Negro. I don't know if you guys have been there. I don't think so. It's in the southwest part of Romania. That's a church that he built there. Why Frontline decided to work with National as well? How many, how many churches a missionary should plant in his lifetime? Give me a number. 20. Somebody in Texas said 10. Let's, let's say, stay with 20. Well, how about if we have 10 students that are graduating every year as they go back in ministry? How many churches we can plant or reopen? Because in Romania, sometimes we just have to reopen a church that it was closed because we didn't have there somebody who uh, was there to take care of the congregation. Or the old people die and they didn't have new members. So from 94 until today, I think we have over 100 if I'm correct, I think over 120 churches that we reopen or plant there. So that's how the ministry is going there. And I, I just want you to see a picture of uh, one of our graduates there. And uh, that's uh, the plant. And of course, cars are breaking down all the time. So we did take a picture there. Uh, that's a Romanian way of repairing cars. One is repairing and the other four are praying for him. If you do an X for me. This is Nick, Nick Militaro. Uh, Nick, he used to serve uh, in prison for some things that he did in his past. So after he got out of the prison, he called and he said, do you think I can come to school? Nick received the Lord in the prison and I said, Nick, of course you can come to school. What is unique about Nick is that now he's serving in the same prison. He's ministering now in the same prison. And some of the inmates there knew him before, and they see the difference in him. And he's serving in the south part of, of, of Romania. Maybe next time when you are there, it will be awesome to connect with, with Nick and see the ministry that he's having there in, in, in the prisons. This is from all about it, to take people from their background, train them, and send them back in their, uh, in their communities because they know better. They, uh, are well known. People saw changes in their lives and everything that God did, did in, in their life. When I show you the previous picture, I've been to uh, our graduate there. Everybody in the village waved at him whenever we drove by. So uh, you can tell the impact that, that he has there. Pastor and Wife Conference 2016. I know many of you support the uh, Pastor and Wife Conference. I just want to tell you what a blessing it was for everybody there. I had pastor come to me and told me for 30 years I didn't have three days with my wife. Uh, we made a strong recommendation that the kids were going to stay home. And the majority of them came without the kids. It was an awesome time for them as families. It was an awesome time for the teaching uh, of the word there. So it is my dream, and I am a dreamer or a visionary, whatever you want to call it, 
that every two years we'll be able to do this with Frontline for our pastors in the area, for our graduates to have a time when them with their wives, with other kids, come and connect each other. You know, we pastors, we go to many conferences. We see each other, greet each other, but many times our wives are just uh, sitting home with our kids. They, we need time with them, and, and they need time with us. So it was such a blessing, and I have another picture from the conference. <clears throat> this is the inside of the hotel there where the conference was. It was such a blessing for, for us to be able to do, the, to do that for them. And it, it was such a, a good uh, testimony for the school as well. Because people said, who did this for us? And I said, you know, at, at TBBI, Frontline did this for you. And they were so impressed. So thank you very much for all of you who uh, sustain a couple there or maybe... You were involved financially, or you pray for us there. It was a, a blessed time for all of us. You do next. As you know, as some of you know, I'm serving as an assistant pastor with my father. I can tell you that it is a unique uh, role that I have there. And you are dead being the senior pastor. It's a unique thing. But uh, I'm blessed to be able to serve with him. I'd like to tell you today that in Romania we baptize 30, 40, 50 people, but we are not. So people are... Uh, uh, coming to the Lord very, very hard. Uh, we baptize sometimes two people, one, one, one people, t- uh, three people, depending on, on, on how the Lord it is working on their hearts. We do believe that it is our job to throw the seed, but it is His job to make that seed uh, grow, and it is His job to bring the people in. So I think uh, uh, God bless, bless both of the churches with if you do a next, you'll see the, the other church in Gethsemane. The, the joy that I have here is that all three of the people that got baptized, they're from the Orthodox background. So it is always an, an, an awesome opportunity to see when people are coming from the Orthodox background. If you do a next, this uh, children ministry that we have in Jurak. Um, it, it's a joy to see there so many kids that are coming and singing our worship service. And I'm sure some of you are familiar with that because some of you have seen that uh, kids coming out and, and, uh, and sing there. Next. All right. This is a, a bank statement that we have because uh, uh, when we moved to Romania in 2010, we moved on $400 per month. I'm not recommending no missionaries whatsoever to do that. Um, right now we are at $1,100 per month and we desperately need to raise more support. We are looking at 13 more partners or $150 per month. I just want to tell you something that all these six years, it has been for us trust in the Lord. I didn't know how, from where, but at the right time, he brought in the whole amount that we needed. Brother Bill said that I don't have a um, that we don't have money in the bank. And I said, yeah, we do. 0.08, 0.63, 1.29, that's money in the bank. But God has been faithful to us. And uh, if we are here today, it is because we had friends and we had uh, people who not only pray for us, but as God spoke to them, they uh, support us financially as well. And it, it, it has been such a blessing for us to uh, have this journey with God because it, it, it actually had, has, had, has been for us a journey with the Lord in, in, in our finance anyway. Next. Many of you know or some of you know uh, uh, Josh, a church from Pennsylvania. They came to Romania, visit us, and they decided to build us a house there. We are $2,500 short to finish our house in Romania. It is our prayer that, that we're going to move uh, uh, there by this uh, winter. But everything in God's timing and everything in, in God's hands. So if you do a next for me. If you wonder how can you connect with us, we have there uh, a website, totmission.org. And I made a, a Facebook page because people are saying today if you don't have a Facebook page, you are not existing. So Tat Mission updates, you can connect with us there. You can connect us. Uh, you can sign up for our newsletter on our uh, website, tatmission.org. You have Frontline Fellowship uh, uh, website there, right there. So if you uh, think God is speaking to your heart to become one of our partners, just come and talk to me, and I'll, I can give you all the details. I'll take questions now.
Yes, sir. That's on the second floor of the new building. Yes, sir. On the, on the downstairs, we have the offices, a, a small kitchen that will be uh, a full kitchen for them to use in the future. And we have another classroom that right now, uh, we have a master degree there that we are trying to open on the classroom on the downstairs. With one of our professors, we are in talks with a, with a, a university in Germany that want to help us uh, develop their master program. We'll have another classroom in the, in the old facility after we remodel it. Yes, sir? What's the update on the uh, lovely neighbor? The lovely neighbor is still lovely. <laughs> <laughs> She's cursing us, uh, uh, called the police on us. I'm the one, me and Dad, we are the one who are going to the police station. We have an agreement with the police station there that every fort... Uh, uh, complaint that she's made will have to go ahead there and uh, you know, declare that we didn't do nothing wrong and it's only her. The police know her, so sh they know that we don't do whatever she said. But it's still frustrating when you bring uh, friends from the states or f people from Romania, they come there and visit, and you are in your yard, you know, we're only speaking not, not loud, and she starts cursing at us and saying stuff about us. And, and the problem with our lovely neighbor is that... Uh, She's trying to get all the neighbors around us to be against us. So. But we are praying for that uh, money to come in so we can buy the next uh, uh, that small house property. We really need that. If we were going to develop something there in the future, we really need that space because, uh, I mean, you can't do it like that. It's just not, not the way that we should do it. Yes, sir. Come to get us. Oh, the Orthodox Church is the main religion. I can tell you that we are tolerated, but we are not really, I mean, they don't really like us there. I can give you one example from one of our funerals there in one of the churches that dad is serving. Uh, they didn't let us bury our old, uh, our dead people in their cemeteries. Only if the, pre, uh, only if the priest were gonna perform the service from the gate to the, uh, to the burial site. So we did all the service until the gate, and the priest at the gate took the dead people and did the service again until the burial site. So, yeah, they don't encourage their people to come to our churches. And of course, for their services, it, it is a fee that they need to pay, so. Any other question? Yes, sir? <clears throat> well, it, it, it is the national religion, so the mayor will going to listen to the priest. The priest always can go to the mayor with no problem. Everything that they're going to ask, it will going to be done. There's no question asked. They have a very uh, 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 big influence in the parliament there because everybody is orthodox, so they will tell them, you know, we're not going to bury you or we're going to... Uh, give uh, uh, something for you that you're not going to be able to bury in our cemeteries and stuff like that. So they have control over uh, that thing. So they have a, a, a powerful influence. Plus all their businesses that they are doing at their church is in cash. But nobody knows how much money they have or how much money they, uh, they bring in. What I told you about the holy relics, they show a picture about two years ago where the priests were having uh, uh, barrels full with money that they brought in the church. That's how it is. Especially in, in, in a rural area, people are threatened by the priests. They're not going to bury them or uh, they're not going to marry their kids and stuff like that. So usually Baptist communities are small communities. Someone else? No. No, because the land, just to give you an example how expensive the land is, is in Romania where we live, it's 100, it's 100 euro per square meter where we live there. So you can imagine, and they, they cannot, you can buy a land to do a cemetery where you want, only if that land it is designed for to become a cemetery. We apply, 
at one of the churches we apply at the city hall to, to receive a land and because we are in good standing with the mayor, he gave us a land. But that's very, very few churches obtain a land from the city hall for their burial site. Usually they have to purchase the land. And a $350 or $400 per month as a salary, many churches are not able to uh, even pay their pastors. How about to purchase a piece of property to build a cemetery? That would be the future. Maybe many churches have to come together, buy a piece of land somewhere and have a, cem a cemetery. But for right now, we have to deal with whatever we have. Well, we have uh, uh, Kachina that is going into Serbia, and, and, and I've seen uh, his name there. Uh, he's working there in, in Vršets. I can tell that Serbia is a very hard uh, terrain there to work. Uh, the Serbians are usually working on Sunday. Sunday is their day when they work their fields. It's an agriculture community there where they are, so it's, it, it's very hard. We have partnership with, with some of their churches. Our church have two partnerships there in Serbia where we go and help them out. But people are seldomly coming to, to Christ there, so. And I know Trian has a, a, a family. He has a, ch a child there who has some disability, so it's not, it's not easy for him. I visited him maybe seven or eight months ago. And we have one of our graduates that is in our church that's working in Serbia. He's going every, every second Sunday in each month in Serbia. Usually we are trying to send send a, a team with uh, with teams with, with teams with him, but it's hard. And now because Romania is in UE and Serbia is not at the border, you could spend there an hour and a half, two hours, depending on how how the crossing is. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I think the people who are working outside in the Western Europe, they are working outside and they, and they send money back. That's how it is. I mean, there's no economy, to tell you the truth. The only economy that it is right now in Romania is they buy cheap here and sell high there. We really don't have no economy, if I can put it like that. We used to have factories, we used to have many other things, but not anymore. What drive the economy down? The corrupt government, if I can say that. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you want to hear. <laughs> Corruption is still high in Romania. Everything can be done for a price. That's the unspoken word. But we just don't want to do it that way, so. If you cry about bureaucracy here in US, please come and visit Romania. At the new house, we put our uh, 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 papers to uh, to get connected to the gas line. Uh, we have that uh, paper in, and we paid for it eight months ago, and they still didn't came to connect uh, us to the main gas line, which is only about a meter away from our house. Okay, and I went there and I asked them why, and they said, you know, everybody's staying in line. If you uh, think that gas, our, uh, gas price is too high here in, in the States, please come to Romania. We pay, we pay about 6 or $7 per gallon there. As I spoke yesterday with Pastor, the food in Romania is more expensive than your food here. After six years in Romania, I don't know how people are making it there with $400 per month. I put gas in my car for $400 per month. They want to. We still have people in our parliament that will rather sell us to Russia than to Germany. We, we always have been a nation between uh, two great powers. So we were for sale pretty much all our history, either to the west or either to the east to Russia. So. You've seen the movement as they did in Ukraine. I'm not a political analyst, so. But we do have Russian influence, and they don't like the uh, anti-shielded uh, uh, NATO did there at the Vesel, so they're against all of those things. Actually, they threatened Romania, if I'm correct, maybe three months ago, that just because having that anti-shield uh, uh, there at uh, the Vesel, 
will going to put us at risk. That's what Putin said. And now we have all this migration uh, uh, from the Middle East of uh, uh, Muslim to Germany, usually Italy. So they don't really like Romania because Romania will go. We're going to give them only one dollar per day for food. Germany is giving them about 40 euro per day. So that's why everybody's trying to get to Germany. Pastor, I think we did good time. I saved 10 minutes. 